praise him. Bless be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello, DJ Ball. What's up, my brother? God bless you. God bless you, man. How's it going? God bless you, brother. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. Hallelujah. How's your week going, man? Blessed be the name of Jesus. You having a good week? Come on. Come on in, guys. We're going to have a fantastic time today. I love, I love Tuesdays. Hey, Belinda, God bless you. So good to see you. What's up, Gerald? I love, I love Tuesdays because that's when we get to reconnect. Praise God. Hello, Patsy. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Kiana, so good to see you. Come on in. What's up, Maurice? How you doing, man? I am excited, Moretta, to see you guys. Looking forward to hanging out with you guys today. And thank you guys for taking time, Lanika, to hang out with me. Praise God. I want to send love your way, every single one of you guys. I want you to know that Jesus loves you, and so do I. I want to pray the blessings of God over you and your family. Everything you do prospers. Get loose. What's up, my brother? I, I, I decree and declare that God has blessed the works of your hand, Justin. Praise God. And every place your foot treads upon, that God has given to you. I speak the blessings over your life, the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We thank God that no weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment will be condemned in the name of Jesus. Praise God. If God be for you, who in the world can be against you? Praise God. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you, right? Not unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you think or ask, according to the power that works within you in Jesus' name. I pray the blessings over your life that makes it rich and adds no sorrows to it. Praise God. Come on, Candace. I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord is truly your strength. The fire of God is on you. Praise God. You are covered. You are in the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise God. Praise God. If God be for you, who in the world could be against you? He loves you. He loves you. God loves you beyond measure. Beyond measure. Listen, God loves you beyond measure. Receive that. Receive that. Every gift, every calling. Every desire, every need, every want is at your disposal. You have to know that being a child of God, listen to what I'm saying to you. Listen to what I'm saying to you. You don't have to work for it. You are a child of the living God, okay? And being a child of the living God, every need, every want, every desire is at your disposal. I want you to hear me when I tell you this. I'm not just saying it because I want to pump you up and make you feel good. I'm telling you the absolute gospel truth, okay? If you think that you are a good parent, how much more is God a better parent? Listen to what I'm saying to you. Every need, every want, every desire is at your disposal. Why? Because you are the son and the daughter of the living God. We are in relationship with the God who shares everything with us. I mean, everything that is everything that is at God's disposal is at yours. Why? You're his child. You've got to receive that reality, okay? You don't have to toil. You don't have to hustle. Just, just receive it, all right? And I pray that the message that you guys heard on Sunday has activated something in you. And you're walking in the sonship of God. You are a son of the living God. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, I may go in a different direction today. I, I may go in a different direction. I may, I'm, I, I may go in a different direction. Just keep coming in. I may go in a different direction as I, as I, you know, nothing I prepared for, but I'm hearing something else right now as I, as I speak the sonship over you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I love, I love the Lord. I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and strength in Jesus' name. Praise God. Come on in, family. God bless you. I got something good for you. I got something really good for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. Praise God. Come on in. We about to, I, I'm going to pray in a second and then we'll get started. Let me see something. Praise God. Keep on tagging your family and friends, okay? Keep on tagging your family and friends. 
Tag your family, tag your friends. They want to hear this message. I got something I want to speak to you about. I want to encourage you today. I have. A, I want to encourage you in the most major way, okay? Let me go into prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, we bless you. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to eat from your table. We thank you that your word is true, and your word would not return unto you void in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you are with us. You'll never leave us, nor would you forsake us. We thank you, Lord God, that in your presence there's fullness of joy. We thank you for God the Father, for God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I yield to your wisdom and your counsel. None of me and all of you, I decrease that you may increase. Speak to my mind right now. Speak to my mind. Speak to the heart inside of me. And allow me to uh, give your children a word that will set their souls on fire. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We thank you in the name of Jesus that we are more than conquerors. We thank you that the gathering angels are here. And we thank you, Lord God, for your revelation, your revelation of truth. So I yield to your wisdom and I yield to your counsel. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm just getting something on the fly. That's why I'm reading because the Spirit of God is speaking to me. Nothing that I prepared for. So I'm just going to come off the cuff here and I'm going to read the scripture to you. And we're, going to, we're just going to flow with the revelation of God. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, I want to uh, make a couple of announcements here. Um, I want to announce, first and foremost, I want to tell you guys that I am sincerely graceful, graceful, grateful for all of you guys, how you guys blessed me for my birthday. It was truly, truly a blessing. I thank you guys for, for just being awesome. I thank you guys for being a blessing to me, showing love, extending love, because the same love that you gave me, I definitely have that back to you as well. So thank you guys for just being honorable because you guys made Sunday unforgettable. And so I love you guys, all, all you guys, and thank you just for being a blessing in the name of Jesus. Secondly, I want you to also remind you guys that on this Saturday, we are having a part two, right? A part two to our evangelism class, okay? And so um, if you missed part one, don't miss part two. It was, it was outstanding. Bishop Young did an awesome job. We're going to start at 10 a.m. by Zoom. And the link went out today. And also an email or, or a text message will go out on Friday as well. Okay? Praise God. Let me get started here. I'm going to, um, let me just turn this thing off here. I'm going to, you know, I had something written down. But I, wanna, I, I want to speak about something else here. Okay, I want I want to speak to you here um, on this scripture that I have. I just pulled it, it just came to me. I'm going to do a part two to what I did on Sunday. Sunday's message was titled "Committed," and it was uh, this is part two today. Committed, and in parentheses is light, and I want to tell you that you are a child of light. Okay. You are a child of light. And when you walk in light, you walk in a certain level of, of understanding and knowing who you are. There are two people, there are two different kind of people in the world. There are people who know who they are, and there are people who are trying to figure out who they are, all right? And what I learned and what I'm learning is that, you know, before I, before I go any further, do me, a, do me a favor. Press the share button right now. Go ahead on and, and share this message on your wall. Help me to evangelize. Yeah, do that for me. Let's get more people on here. So go ahead and press your share button now. Help me to get the word out, okay? And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for pressing the share. Help me to evangelize. When you know who you are and when you know whose you are, there's a different level 
of, of attitude that you have. It's a different, different level of, 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 of commitment that you have. Because when you know who you are, what happens is you have, you have the confidence, right? And in that confidence, you, you, you show your level of commitment. And I want, to, I want to speak to you about being committed. And the reason is, is because that word is, is like a curse word today. If you, if you tell someone to be committed, they kind of feel as if you're going at them, right? And the reason is, is because we have so many people who truly don't understand what it is to be committed, okay? So let me help you today to be committed, all right? I want you to change how you see yourself. I'm going to read to you Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to read to you Romans chapter 8. And the uh, I'm going to read it to you in the New American Standard Bible, okay? And I'm going to start from, uh, let's see. I'm going to start from verse, verse 12, right? So Romans chapter 8, verse 12, right? And it reads that like this. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh, but uh, to live according to the flesh. For if we are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting the, uh, to death the deeds of the body, and you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Okay? So verse 13, it says that you are, you are the sons of God. All right? For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. All right? Now listen. Okay? If you're being led by the Spirit of God, the Bible says that you are his son. And, and you know, we know the Bible, there is no sex. That means daughter as well. All right? So I want you to know that if you are living by the Spirit, if you are moved by the Spirit, you are the son of God. Okay? Now, in order to be a son or a child of God, it requires a high level of commitment. Okay? And we've been, we've been told for so long that, you know, we can rely on God's commitment. We can rely on, on what Jesus did. But we know since we learned on Sunday, that's not the truth, all right? Yes, God is committed. Jesus is committed. Holy Spirit is committed, okay? But in order for you to be a son of God, a child of the living God, okay, you're going to need to be committed as well, right? If you're not committed, then what you're saying is, I don't want to be a child of God. Because in order to see all that God has for you, in order to receive the inheritance, and I, I'll read more about this as I go on. In order to have everything that God has for you, family, you listen to me. It requires a high level of commitment. Now, here's the thing. In this day and time, right, the world is doing all that the world can do. To have you not committed, all right? The world is throwing issues at you. The world is throwing concerns at you. The world is throwing fear at you. All of these things, the world is throwing your way so that you will not be committed, right? But if, if you know that you are a child of God, right? Knowing that your father has your back, knowing how important you are to your father, knowing how much your father loves you, then your commitment has to be there. So let me help you be committed even more. Let's go down memory lane. How many things have God saved you from? How many things have God protected you from? How many things you know, you know you deserve this penalty. You know you deserve this to happen. But because he loves you and because you are his child, he's committed to your success. He's committed to your safety. He's committed. He's committed to your protection. You are in relationship with the committed God. You are in relationship with the committed God. So much so that he calls you a child, right? So that must mean you are, he's your father. Then let me go further. Let me go further. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. And it says this. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, 
but you have received a spirit of adoption. You hear me? For you have received a spirit of adoption and sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. See, you have a spirit of adoption. You, was, you were once an orphan, but when Jesus died, you were adopted. You were, you were born into the family. His blood, him dying on the cross, made you family. You were not family when Adam sinned. But Jesus was committed to death for one reason, so that you can stop calling him God and start calling him Father. Think about that for a second. Now, I shared this before and I'll share it again. Throughout all scripture, Jesus is saying, I am, I am the Father or one. If you, if you see the Father, you see me. We are the same. We're equal. That's what Jesus said over and over again. But he changed. He changed his communication on the cross when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What happened? What happened? I, I, let me tell you what happened. When Jesus went on the cross, we trade places. We swapped. He became an orphan so that you and I can become sons and daughters. Man, so listen, prior to this, prior to Calvary, we were, we were saying, God, God, God. And he was saying, Father, Father, Father. At Calvary, he said, God, so that you and I can say, Father. So we're adopted. Listen, we're adopted. Let me help you. There is, there, is, there is an inheritance that you have. You have an inheritance. When, 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 when Jesus died and God adopted you, everything that's in God's disposal belongs to you. That's what I'm telling you. Every care, every want, every need, every desire is already there. But if you're not committed, you won't get it. See, the will that you received, that you and I received, that changed how we approach God. The will came by the commitment that Jesus had to change how we approach the Father. That's how the will came. All right. Now, how do you, there's a will, okay? Oh, boy, this is so good. All right. So someone dies in your family, and they, they leave a will behind. And in the will, they say, okay, I'm leaving X amount of money. I'm leaving this property. I'm leaving, I'm leaving this land, okay? All right? So you go to the table and sit with a lawyer, and the lawyer discuss with you all that your family left. You go to the table, and you sit and receive the will. You receive the will, all right? In order to get the will that God has for you, you must come to the table. Right. But in order to get the will, the will must be received the way the will was given. Lord have mercy. Let me let me let me slow this thing down. I'm feeling this thing. The way to get the will, whatever's in the will. Now, you have an unlimited will, unlimited. In other words, whatever God has. We are in relationship with the Father who shares it with you equally. It's not that he's giving you part of the will. The entire will belongs to you. The entire will. All right? Now, the will came by commitment. Now, how do you cash the will? By commitment. If you're not committed, you can't cash the will because the will are for the sons of God. Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty. The will... The will that Jesus gave us only belonged to sons and daughters. But you prove that you are a son or daughter by being committed. If you're not committed, then it's not that the will is not there. You're saying that I don't want to be a son. I don't want to be a daughter. Therefore, you can't get mad at someone who's cashing out on their will, but you're not. The person who cashes out on their will accepted sonship. That's it. So if you don't accept sonship, what you're saying is 
The will is here, but I don't want it. So you're choosing a different will. Not my will, but your will. You follow me? And so you cash out on the will by being committed. When you're committed, now you can go to the table and say, that belongs to me. And God says, yes, it is. And he'll give it to you. That belongs to me. God only gives the will to the people who are committed. Let me tell you why. It takes a certain level of maturity to receive the will. When someone dies, they may say that you can't do nothing with this property or with this land until you're 25 years old, until you're 30 years old. So the person may inherit the will at the age of 12. So they got the land, they got the money, but they can't get access to it until they're mature enough to receive it. Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. That's good right there. See, you got the will, but if you're not mature enough, you can't cash it. Now, maturity is not a number. It's a mindset. It's not an age. You can't say, well, I'm 35 and I'm mature. You can be 35 and baby five. You follow me? And so what God is saying is, I got the will for you. You can cash it. But the only thing that would hinder you cashing the will is your level of maturity. Now, only mature people will commit. You know why? Because there are some times that some things are going to happen that you're not going to like. I don't like this. This went, this went left when I believe it should have went right. I don't believe in this. I'm not feeling this. This is not. So what happens when God does something that you don't, you don't agree to? Or you thought it should have went this way. My question is this. Are you still committed? When God does something contrary to your belief, contrary to your feelings, contrary to your thoughts, are you still committed? Because only then can you cash out the check. Now let me, let me prove this to you. Let me go further. Verse, verse 16, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself testified with our spirit that we are children of God, right? The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. You are a child of God. Now, I love this part right here. Verse 17. And if we are children, if, and if children, ears also with God and fellow ears with Christ. You got it? So listen, the Bible says that you are an ear with God and a joint ear with Jesus Christ. Man, we are in relationship with the Father who makes you an ear with him and a joint ear with Christ. So that means that there's nothing that Christ has. There's nothing that the Father has that you don't have. Man, we live in a world where we're trying to get this done and we're toiling for this and we're toiling for that. And the problem is that we don't see ourselves as sons. So we're acting as if we're outside of the family. We're acting as if we're not in relationship with God. And he says you are an ear with God and a joint ear, a joint ear with Jesus Christ. You are a joint ear. You are ear to the throne. I want you to write that for me in the comment section. I am ear to the throne. I want you to write that for me in the comment section. But not just write it. I want you to say it. I want you to write and say, I am heir to the throne. Come on, Maurice. You feeling me on this? I want you to write for me and say it. I am heir to the throne. I want you to say it because you're royalty. Family, you're royalty. Come on. I am heir to the throne. Come on. I am H-E-I-R. H-E-I-R. I am heir to the throne. Come on. I am heir. Come on. Write it down and say it as you write it. You got to connect with this. You are, you are, listen. Listen, you are ear, ears with God and you are joint ear with Jesus Christ. You are ears with God and you are joint ear. But see, the throne, the throne comes with commitment. How committed are you? How committed are you? Jesus is the example of the level of commitment that we have to have. So, if Jesus shows us the level of commitment 
then you require that same level of commitment as well. You are heir to the throne. You listen, you're not just saying this. We, look, 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 guys, check this out. We don't have a religion, guys. Listen, when Adam sinned, God, ever since Genesis chapter 3, the Bible is all about one thing. You ready? From Genesis chapter 3 on, he's trying to bring us back into the family fold. He does not want to be known as God to you. He wants to be known as Father. That's the reason why when they asked Jesus, they said, teach me how to pray, Matthew chapter 6. And, and Jesus says, when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, pray like this, our Father. He did not say our God. We don't have a God. We have a Father. We have a Father. He is Father God. He is Father. You are heirs to the throne. But if your commitment is not there, you can't sit on the throne. You can't proclaim the you can't claim the throne. What is the level of your commitment? How committed are you to the things of God? I was talking to um Maurice and Gerald, I believe, either Maurice or Gerald the other day. I think it may have been Gerald, may have been Gerald. And I said, you know, you would think that when a person does this, a person does this. And a person does this, you would think that everything, you would think that the carpet would be rolled out for them. Okay, this person is fasting, they're praying, they're tithing, they're, 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 they're committed to their family, they're, they're, they're walking in the will of God. And you would think that that person would have the, the red carpet rolled out, right? You would, you, would, you would think that, right? But that person can be doing all of that and still have experienced hell in their entire life. You will say to yourself, wait a minute, this person is fasting, they're praying, they're committed to God, committed to their family. I know this is a good person. He or she uh, walk in integrity, they love the Lord, and yet they have all of this going on in their lives. Why? Because you prove who you are by the commitment that you have. Is he still your father when things don't work out the way you think? Is he still your father when things are not happening as you desire? Are you still committed to him? Are you committed to Are you committed to the bad as much as you are committed to see, see that's a good question right there. My God. Are you committed to the bad as much as you are committed to the good? Are you committed to the lows as much as you are committed to the high? Are you committed to the certainty as much as you are committed to the uncertainty? How committed are you? Or are you only committed when things work out for your favor? When things work out for your benefit? I'm telling you right now. I can tell you by experience that God would always test the level of your commitment. Because God wants to bless you, but many of us are not walking in the blessing of God. Many of us are not receiving the blessing of God for one reason. It's not Satan. It's because your commitment isn't there. Your fair weather. I'm going to rock with you, God. I'm rolling with you when things are good. I'm rocking with you, God. I'm rolling with you, God, when things are high. But are, how committed are you in the low? When you are on the mountain... You're saying, yes, Jesus. You're saying, hallelujah. Can I get the same, yes, Jesus, the same hallelujah in the valley? Mm. In Psalms 23, he says, yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Not the mountain. He says, he says you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Not the mountain. God will put you in a valley to see your commitment. Lord Jesus Christ, man. Many of us are being held up because we're not committed. Why? The first time it doesn't work as you think, you're on to the next. You're, you're going to try this other thing. Okay, God, I gave you five minutes to work this thing out. You didn't do it. I'm going this way instead. I'm going to do it myself. See, that's not commitment. And so now the blessing, the miracle, the breakthrough will elude you. 
Mm. Not because God didn't want to bless you, but, but commitment shows what you're ready for. See, many of us are asking for something that if we got it right now, we're not mature enough for it because your commitment shows you're not ready for it. My daughter wants the keys to the car. I won't give it to her. I love her too much. If I gave it to her now, she's not committed to the responsibility of driving that car. She's not committed to the responsibility of being careful behind the wheel. So God will put you in a place where for five years, Lord, I'm believing for this. Lord, I'm trusting for this. Lord, I'm believing for this. Lord, I'm believing for this. But if, you, if you're faithful over five years of commitment, God will give you birth in year six for it. See, many of you are pregnant with something, but you can't give birth to it because you're not committed to it. And if you're not committed to it, you'll have that baby and abuse it. Whether it's the relationship, whether it's the child for real, whether it's the, 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 the house, whether it's the car, whether it's the marriage. If you're not committed where you are, you won't be committed there. See, Lord have mercy. The Bible tells us in the book of James that a person who's double-minded, they, they, they're unstable in all their ways. Are you so committed that when hell launches an attack on you, you will say, for God I live and for God I die? Come on, talk to me. When, when, when you are facing, when you are in the valley of the shadow of death, when hell is knocking at your door, when all hell is breaking loose, when, when the flood is coming your way, are you, where, where, where are you? Are you complaining? Are you crying? Are you saying, God, why is this happening? Or are you saying, for you I live and for you I die? What is the level of your commitment? Nothing happens in this world. Even, let me say something to you. I study, I study a lot of things. I, I research a lot of things. I study and I research a lot of things. Can I tell you something? Witches and warlocks are more committed to Satan than saints are to Jesus. You, you please hear me. I'm not just saying that. Listen, listen. Let me tell you how committed witches are. You ready? At 2 a.m., when we, the saints of God, are asleep, they're up sacrificing to Satan and sending out curses throughout the world. And we are, while we are counting sheep, they are slaughtering sheep. They're spilling blood. They're cutting the necks of animals. And they're cursing the, the, the church. They're cursing believers. And they're making sacrifices to Satan 2 a.m. in the morning. While the saints of God are asleep. That's why Jesus says, watch and pray. He says, could you not stay up at least one hour? Why is the church asleep? Why is the church asleep? You know why? The church is not committed. It's not committed. You got witches who are more committed to darkness than children who are more committed to light. Reading the book, man, as I read this book, I am in awe to see the level of dedication and commitment that a witch had, a warlock had for Satan. It blows my mind. So that's the reason why we don't see what we see. Because we, we are, the church, the saints of God are lazy in the sense that we believe, okay, here go this five-hour prayer. Have you ever prayed for two hours straight? Have you ever prayed for three hours straight? Have you ever have you ever not eaten for three days? Have you ever spent three hours reading the word of God? Or do you pray for five minutes? Lord, thank no, hold up. That's too long. I'm sorry. 45 seconds. Lord God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Boom, go. That's not commitment. That's not. That's not commitment. When you commit yourself, 
you will simply say this. Jesus, for you I live and for you I die. I am dedicated to this no matter what. When, when, when the flood comes, I believe, my commitment tells me that you will lift up a standard against the enemy. When, when, when trouble comes, my commitment tells me that even though I may be in a storm, a thousand will fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it won't come near me. When the trouble comes, my commitment tells me that, yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil. How committed are you? Are you committed to tell Satan in the midst of an attack, I stand on the promises of God, which are yes and amen? Or are you crying out saying, why is this happening? Why is Satan having this way? There's a curse on my life. There are things that God allows to happen just to build up your level of commitment. Your level of commitment. And listen, this is for me as well because, you know, there's some things that I'm trusting God for, right? There's some things that I'm believing God for. And I have to be honest to you, with you. I'm like, Lord, you, 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 you partner with me. We do this. We do this. We do this. I'm walking with you. And yet I'm still dealing with certain things, right? And it's because I understand that commitment breeds, number one, write this down. Commitment breeds Maturity. Write this down. Write this down. Number one. Commitment breeds maturity. Number one. Commitment breeds maturity. Meaning this. The thing that you cried about three years ago, you don't cry about any longer. It doesn't move you. You're not shaken by it. You're like, oh, well, whatever. Right? Number one. Commitment breeds maturity. Okay? So many of us are in a baby five state. No shade, no disrespect, but mature wise. Let me just be honest with you, okay? I was once in that place myself, all right? So just being honest, all right? But when you're committed, the thing that shook you three years ago don't shake you now. You actually, the thing that you ran from is the thing you embrace, okay? Now let me prove it to you. When David was faced with the battle, he was so committed to God that he did something that no one else did, all right? Now, when, when David was faced with his biggest fight, Goliath, everyone else stood back. Everyone else ran from Goliath, okay? But David was so committed to God and the things of God that David did something that had the giant unbalanced, okay? The giant was used to people retreating. They were used to, he was used to people running, staying behind. But David did the opposite. He ran towards the giant. Why? Because maturity tells me if I run towards the giant, he will fall. Lord have mercy. Giants fall, not in retreat. Giants fall in pursuit. You got to pursue your giant. You got to pursue. See, see, this is maturity. See, I used to run from this issue. I used to run from that issue. I was afraid of this thing. But now that I'm mature, this issue made me cry. This issue made me uncomfortable. This issue frustrated me. But in my maturity, I run towards the problem. Why? Because I know that if, 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 if Lord have mercy, if I show God, I feel this thing. If I show God this level of dedication, listen to me now. If I show God this level of dedication, it's God who's going to kill Goliath and not me. See, I can't kill Goliath. Goliath is too big, too strong, too advanced. But my commitment releases the anointing to kill the giant. Lord have mercy. Is that rich? My commitment my commitment releases God to kill the thing that most people run from. Most people run from giants. But as a child of God, as a saint of God, as I'm a father, you don't run from your giant. You run to your giant because you can't beat them. But your commitment gives God the authority 
to go towards your giant. Praise God. And no giant can stand in the presence of a committed saint. Lord have mercy. I feel this thing. No giant. Listen to me. I don't care what the giant is. I don't care how big the giant is. If you're committed, a giant can't stand in your presence. Number one, commitment breeds maturity. Number two, commitment breeds confidence. I'm coming off the dome. I have nothing written. This is all Holy Ghost. Praise God for Jesus. <laughs> commitment breeds confidence. And see, a lot of people will see confidence and say, he souped up. She conceded. This ain't conceded, baby. I know God. This ain't, this ain't conceded. I know God. David won't concede it. 1 Samuel chapter 16. David won't concede it when he said, I killed this I, I killed this lion. Mm -hmm. I killed this bear with my hands. The God who gave me the authority or the ability to kill this lion and kill this bear with my hands is the same God who's going to kill this giant. Mm -hmm. What's that? That was confidence, not in him. That was confidence in God. See, what David said is, if God did it before, God will do it again. See, that's, that's the reason why you should be committed. Tell me a battle that you faced, that you lost. Jesus. Tell me a battle. Tell me a battle. Tell me a battle that you faced, that you lost. You never lost a battle. Never lost. Never lost it. Why? Because God made sure that his sons wins all battles. His daughter wins all battles. Any battle in your presence, if you have confidence in God, you won. Praise God. Number one, it builds maturity. Number two, it builds confidence. Number three, commitment builds focus. Commitment builds focus. Do you believe I'm coming off the dome right now? Do you believe this? <laughs> Nothing written. This is off the dome. I mean, like, I'm just, this is, this is, this. Commitment builds, when I say focus, mm -hmm. focus. David had a focus. He wasn't worried about the army with Goliath. David only focus was Goliath. See, David knew if I touch the head, the body will fall. Lord have mercy. Trick God Almighty. Lord have mercy. David knew. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, oh, oh, wait. I'm getting a download. I'm getting, I'm getting a download. He's talking to me. David knew. Talk to me now. David knew if I touch the head, the body going to flee. Let me show you what happened here. Goliath is 13 feet tall. He weighs 800 pounds. David is 5'2". He weighs 98 pounds. Okay? David ain't got no business being 5'2", 98 pounds, going towards 13 feet, 800. No business. All right? But David knew that Goliath was the head of the army. Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. And David knew that if I get the head, the body going to fall. Mm -hmm. So David ran towards Goliath. Through the smooth stone, the Holy Spirit gets behind the stone. The angel gets behind the stone and forces the stone with precision and velocity, boom, into the forehead of the giant. Right? And the Bible says that the stone, boom, sunk into the head. Come on now, I'm being dramatic. I want you to feel this thing. The Bible says that the stone, boom, went into the head of the giant. Okay? All right. 
See, I love y'all so much, I don't mind. Boom, back <laughs> myself in the head. Praise God. That's love. If y'all don't say I love you, boy, y'all some bad people, because I'm over here, bang, I'm, I'm over, look at this, banging my head. Praise God. All right. So now, the stone went into the head of the giant, right? The giant fell. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let me show you what happened. When, when, when the stone hit Goliath and it pierced his forehead, right? And he fell. Tell me this. If a giant is 13 feet, right, and he weighs 800 pounds, how big and how heavy is his sword? Talk to me. <laughs> the sword, for the sake of arguing, let's say the sword weighed 150 pounds. That sword weighed more than David. Am I talking right? You're talking right. Talk to me right. The sword weighed more than David. The Bible says that David picked up the sword and cut off the giant head. Where did the strength come from for a 5'2", 85-pound young man to pick up a 150-pound sword? It came from the commitment that he had to God. When he was committed and had the focus, he was strengthened, Lord God, to chop off the giant's head. He would have never chopped off that giant's head if he won't commit it. Because listen to what I'm saying to you. When you're committed to God, I hear this thing right here. Mm -hmm. When you're committed to God, he would take the enemy's weapon and give it to you so that you can cut off your enemy's head. Mm. 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 Listen, I'm going to say it again. When you're committed to God, he would give you the sword of your enemy so that you can have the pleasure of cutting off the head of your enemy. God is not going to cut the head off. He will give you the power for you to cut the head off. Praise Glory be to God. I'm telling you that when you have this level of commitment. So what was the first one? Maturity. The second one was what? Confidence. Confidence uh, focus. focus. Praise God. The fourth thing you get when you're committed is victory. <laughs> Write that down because I'm, I'm getting down. The fourth thing you, commit, you get when you're committed, when you're committed, then the fourth thing you get from God is victory. No one who's committed, listen, you got to, I, you got to hear me. I'm not giving you what I think or feel. I'm giving you the story of David. Mm. Okay? When you are absolutely, now let me tell you what commitment looks like. You ready? When you are committed, you are fully persuaded. I don't care what they say. I don't care what I'm facing. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. I don't care my, my, my current situation. I don't care. I am committed to God. And my commitment breeds, secures, manufactures the victory. Mm. Listen. God is not a respecter of persons. If God gave an 85 pound, five foot two, the victory over a giant, and, and, that's, and that's the Old Testament. You know that's the Old Testament? We got, a, we got a greater covenant in the New Testament, guys. Listen to me. You would never lose if you're committed. See, but some people would say, what well, I'm losing now. You're not losing now. You're in basic training. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Well, I'm going through this right now. You're not going through nothing. You're in boot camp. You're in boot camp. See, what God wants to do is he wants to take you from being a private to make you a general. What God want to do is, Christina, he had you, he want to take you through the ranks. You know, you start as a private and you got to go through the ranks. But see, many of us want to operate 
as if we're generals. You ain't been through nothing. You see what I'm saying? When you, listen, when you, when, when Lord have mercy, good God Almighty, talk to me, Holy Ghost. When, when you experience, when you, when you experience, when you experience the, Lord have mercy, man, oh man, the battle that you face as a private, mm -hmm. when you pass that, it prepares you to eventually be a sergeant. The battle that you face as a sergeant prepares you to be an officer, a lieutenant. See, the greater the battle, the higher the rank. You, if, if you are saying of God, and if you don't think you will have a battle, that's not, that's not how it works. See, God don't want to keep you as a private. God wants to eventually make you a general. But you got to be committed to go through the ranks. Lord have mercy. I can prove it to you. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, you have these brothers. I believe it's Acts 19, if I'm not mistaken. The, 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 the sons of Sceva. They go and they face this demonic, this demonic, this, this man who's demonized. And they try to do something that they want rank for. And so when the demon saw them, the demon said, wait a minute, wait a minute. The demon said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who in the world are you? What the demon was saying is, I recognize rankings. Jesus has rank over me. Paul has rank over me. But you, you're underranked. You're out of your league. You don't belong here. So what happened was, the demon beat the seven brothers to the point where they were naked and they ran out naked. I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who in the world are you? They weren't ranked. Why? Because they did not pass the test when they were privates. So they want to jump, jump into generalship. Lord, is that, is that a word, generalship? I'm just cleaning it up. You can't jump into generalship. Is that, is that a word? <laughs> Probably is, I don't know. You can't jump into generalship. I made it up. It's a new word, whatever. You can't be a general if you never went through the ranks. You, are, you ain't got no business, no business stepping to somebody who's higher rank than you. Well, I just made it up, uh, Donna. Just roll with me, please. Lean with me, rock with me. I made the word up. General, general shit. Write it down, write it down. How do you spell general shit? General and put ship at the end of it. Is, is it a word? It's a word? It's a word, Donnie. Yes, it is. It's a word. Thank you, Father, for that. The word general shit is a word. Praise God. General shit is a word. What did we see? What did it mean? General shit. The skill or practice of exercising military command. General shit is a word. See, that's Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you. I need you all around more often because I'll be making up stuff. Generalship is a word. Praise God. So, so, so when they step to the set to to uh to this demon, the demon said, "Wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I submit to Jesus. I submit to Paul. I'm not going to submit to you." And 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 the demon beat, he beat the brakes out of them dudes, man. He beat them dudes right out of there, all bloody, cut up, and all naked. Why? Because they were outranked. You follow what I'm saying? They were outranked. They weren't in their rankings, man. So you got to go through it. But when you go through each step, based on your commitment, you got the victory. All right. And what's the last one? I, I had it. Hold up. Bring it back to you, Holy Spirit. So I gave four points, right? Mm -hmm. Maturity, confidence. Maturity, confidence. Focus, victory. Focus, victory. Hold on, I, I had the last point. Bring it back to me, Holy Ghost. Focus. Hold on, what, tell me again what it was. It was maturity, maturity, confidence, confidence focus, 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 and victory. And victory. Peace. Okay. The last point. Oh, thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
The last thing you get when you are committed is rewarded. Mm. Commitment breeds reward. When you look at the story of David, David told, David came and he asked twice. He said, what does the person get who defeats this giant? Twice, twice. David asked the question. He says, what does the person get who defeats this giant? They said, you, 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 you'll marry the king's daughter and you won't pay taxes. There, there was a financial, Lord have mercy. Oh boy, I, I hear this thing. There is a financial reward for people who are committed. Because David was committed, one of the things he gained was, was marriage, which means multiplication. But he also gained a financial reward. They said the person who defeats this giant won't pay taxes. Whenever you're committed, God would never take your commitment and not bless you for it. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. I, I, want you, I want you to receive this right here. Nothing you do for God. Now, you got you to hear me on this. Nothing you do for God. Nothing you do God conscious. Nothing you do with God in mind. Would ever go unnoticed or unrewarded. Please hear me. If you ever do anything for God. With God in mind. You, you would never go unnoticed or unrewarded. God eyes. The eyes of the angels are on, listen to me now, anyone who is committed to God has the attention of heaven. You go to the bank, you go to the credit union, you go to Wells Fargo, you go to Bank of America, and you go to the ATM or you go to the, the counter and you pull out, you, you, make, you make deposits but you also make withdrawals. Whew. Heaven. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a few more minutes. Can, can, I, can I get a few more minutes? Because I'm, I'm getting a download. Can I, can I get a few more minutes from me? I know, I know you're right here at 8 o'clock. Can I get a few more minutes from me? Because I, I, I got to release this thing. Heaven is your bank. Your bank is not Bank of America. Your bank is not Wells Fargo. Your bank is not Navy Federal. Your bank is not Credit Union. Your bank is not Bank of America. It is not. It is not. Nothing they have will fulfill what God has for you. Nothing. Listen to me. Heaven is your bank. It's your spiritual bank. And when you deposit in your spiritual bank, your commitment guarantees any withdrawal that you want, need, or desire. Do you hear me? Listen to what I'm saying to you. What Bank of America is limited to, what Wells Fargo, credit unions, whatever the bank is, whatever these banks have, there is a limitation to what you can withdraw. Mm. Talk to me. Mm. You can only withdraw a certain amount of money a day from the ATM. You can have all the money in the bank you want, but the ATM limits what you can draw in a day. Mm. Talk to me up in here. Mm. 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 But we got a bank. Mm -hmm. It's called the kingdom of God that you can go to that bank any day of the week, 24-7, 366. I'm including leap here. Praise God. And there is no limitations to what you can draw from that bank if you're committed. You can draw from that bank at 2 p.m. 
You could draw from their bank at 2 a.m. You could draw from their bank 12 noon. You could draw from their bank at 12 midnight. The bank never closed. You can withdraw from that bank if you're committed. And when you're committed, the reward is great. Because according to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, talk to me up in here. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you think or ask according to the power that works within you. I'm telling you, this is my phone. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus that you can withdraw from anything or anyone at any given time. All you got to do is stay committed. If you stay committed, listen, Lord have mercy. He'll give you a blessing based on Psalms 23. He tells you what it is. He says, your cup run over. David got more than he bargained for. The man came to deliver bread. And he ended up with the bread. Lord have mercy. Mm. Am I talking right? Mm. Listen. David came to deliver bread. And when he won the battle, he got the bread. I mean the money. The luchi. The chicken. He got the money, man. The people who, people who are committed get the bread. See, you got the butter. You need the bread. <laughs> you got the butter. But your commitment gives you the bread. Come on, talk to me up in here. He's called the bread of life. Praise God. You got the butter. See, 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 Candace, chicken is a terminology that the young kids use for money. They, they said chicken, that means money. So I, I got my slang up. Praise God. Praise you know, I'm, I'm still, I got my slang still rolling, okay? The chicken means the money, praise God. See, see, you got the, you got the butter, but what you need is the bread. But Jesus says, I am the bread. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you get the bread when you're committed. You see, your commitment looses the bread. It, it releases the bread. Praise God. So I gave you five points. Maturity. Uh, confidence. confidence focus. focus. Victory. victory reward and reward. Praise God. I'm done. I, I you know, I, I, listen. I, I ain't gonna add too much to this because you, 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 listen. Here's the good thing: you can get any kind of bread you want. You can get French, Italian, garlic. It don't matter. Wonder, wheat, white. It don't matter. You determine the bread by the amount of butter that you bring to the table. Praise mm. God. And the butter, the butter is the commitment because when you're committed, the butter won't stay solid. It's gonna melt you. See, see, commitment changes who you are. You may come as a solid block of butter, but when you're committed, the butter melts away. Praise God. It makes you a new creature. See, commitment changes who you are. David went from being a shepherd to being king. Why? He took off the head of the problem. Why? He was committed to the problem. Are you committed to the problem as much as you are committed to the solution? Man, this type of teaching right here. Oh, are you committed to the problem as much as you are committed to the solution? Are you committed to the light as much as you are committed to the darkness when it comes your way? Are you committed to the light to the point where darkness may come, but it can't stay? Mm. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Good God Almighty. Oh are you committed to... The light to the point where darkness comes up and says, ooh, let me get out of here. Yeah. I can't stay. See, people who are not committed to light, when darkness comes, oh, they, they, the darkness takes over the light. Mm. But how committed are you? How focused are you? How mature are you? How confident are you? All of that gives you the victory, and the victory gives you the reward. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Father, I gave you wisdom. I gave you revelation. I had a lot of fun too, man. I had a lot of fun. You guys enjoyed that? I had a blast. I had a blast. I gave you truth. 
I thank you, Lord God, that this energy, this fire that's on me will fall afresh upon your children on the, on the side of this, this recording and your sons and daughters here in the building. Praise God. We thank you, Lord God, for revelation. You are the revelator. I take no credit. This came from you, Jesus. You did this. You are the king. And what you want to do, Jesus, is you want to show us what commitment brings. Father, anything that does not support our commitment, anything that goes against our commitment, we give it to you now. Anyone who does not support our commitment, anyone who's hindering our commitment, we hand that person to you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we may struggle to let go of that thing. We may struggle to let go of that person. But Father, with your help, give us the boldness of David. Your, you, you said David was a man after your own heart. Why? Because no matter what, he was unmovable, unshakable. He was committed. Father, may the spirit of David... The spirit that had him look at a giant that others ran from. They, they said they said he was too big. He was too he was too big to fight. And David said, That's exactly what I need. I need someone big to fight so that I can show the world that I am a son of the living God. For the no fight before us would we lose. If we are 100%, if you're out there, you, I want you to hear me on this. I'm speaking prophetically now. You stay with me as I prophesy. Don't go nowhere. If you're facing a battle in your life, emotionally, financially, mentally, physically, and spiritually, I want to release the word of God in your family, your husband, your wife, your children. I don't care what the problem is. I put this in, in the name of Jesus. If you're facing a problem in your life, if you commit to God, God will overturn that problem and you have victory over it. If I be a prophet of God, if I be a mouthpiece of the Lord Jesus Christ, if I be a vessel of Yeshua, I'm telling you what I know to be true. I am a living witness. I was facing 40 years in jail. The judge gave me 10 years and suspended every single day and put me on a year probation. I was facing deportation. I'm telling you, I knew people who got taken out of this country for speeding. I got caught up in some drug business and the judge gave me a stay here. Don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I faced so many giants. But my commitment to the word of God, my commitment to the Bible, my commitment to the blood of Jesus, the commitment that I had to the Lord Jesus Christ gave me the victory. Not sometimes the Bible says, now thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. I believe that's, uh, that's uh, 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 Romans. Find that for me. Is it Romans chapter 2? Find it for me. Now thanks be to God. Who always causes me to triumph. Find, find that for me. Google it. Is Romans, is it Romans? No. Thanks be to God. But that's Romans. Find it for me. Because I, I want to read that to you. I'm, I'm in the vein. I'm in the vein. Just, y'all just stay with me. I'm, I'm prophesying. Now, thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. What, what is that? But no, but you got to find it on your phone because I don't, I don't remember the scripture. I'm, 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 I'm all, you know. 2 Corinthians 2.14. 2 Corinthians 2 14? That's what it was. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Thank you. I need you around more often. It says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Listen to me now. And maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Yes, Lord. He will make you to triumph. Not listen. Listen. Either, Lord have mercy. Boy, I'm about, I'm about to throw this phone by you. By your <laughs> Either God is true or God isn't. If God says that he always causes you to triumph, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 
verse 14. If God says that he always, always, see DJ Khaled bit that from Jesus. He plagiarized. That came from Jesus first. I want you to write for me in the comment section. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> Put that in the comment section, praise God. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. I got Jesus on my mind. I can never get enough. Praise mm. God. Put your hands up. Come on. That's praising God. Amen. Put that, put, and it stay there. And it stay there. Listen, I want you to put it. Well, well y'all pumping me up. <laughs> I want you to put it in the comment section. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. And say it and write it at the same time. Praise God. I'm All I do is win, 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 no matter what. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Amen. I got Jesus on my mind. I can never Amen. get enough. Amen. Come on, Maurice. I'm pumped up, man. Y'all got to be, be pumped up. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. I got Jesus on my mind. I can never get enough. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Every time I read the word of God, I put my hands up. And they stay there. 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 Praise God. Huh? 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 to a club after this. Listen. You just didn't get a word. You got a rhema word. Mm -hmm. You got a revelation. Listen to me. You would never lose. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, who always, 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 if the Bible is true, you always win. Listen. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got Jesus on my mind. I can never get enough. And every time I read the Bible, my hand goes up, and they stay there. Yeah. And they stay there. And they stay there. And they stay there. And they stay there. Praise God. Shh. Hallelujah. Boy, y'all, y'all, boy, y'all pull out of me today. Boy, I feel good. Listen. When we when we get into our building, which is real soon, when we get into our building, we're gonna turn up. We're we gonna listen. We're gonna turn this thing all the way up, guys. I promise you. We're gonna get our building real soon. It's gonna happen sooner than you think. When we get into this building. We're going we gonna, to we gonna change this city. We're going to first start in the city. Then we're going to start in this, this state. Then we're going to go to different states. The nations. We're going we go to the nations. Fit for the kingdom, we're going to the nations. Jesus, you be glorified. Praise God. If you guys enjoy this, praise God. If you guys enjoy this, flood the stream of hearts the Holy Spirit. The angel of wisdom is here. Praise God. I can't wait for us to be in person. When we get in person, I'm gonna tell you, we, we're gonna have people traveling from all over the world just to sit in service with us because the, the anointing, the Holy Ghost is gonna be there with angels of God. We're moving supernaturally, praise God. Praise I feel I, I, I feel the anointing is on me. We're global. Flood the stream of more hearts for Holy Spirit. Praise yes, God. Yes. I love yes, it. We, so we just we just remixed it. We just we just we just took that couch because he bit off of Jesus, so we're gonna take it back. Hey, that's not that, no, but he sampled Christ. We're gonna take it back. That don't belong to Cali. That belongs to Jesus. He says, Now thanks be to God who always causes us to trust. I believe that Cali read that scripture and made that song based on that scripture. Because he believed he you know he loved the Lord. Cali loved the Lord. Cali, DJ Cali read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, and made that song, and it's a hit. Because he dedicated that song to Jesus. Jesus. I know he did. I know he did. Caleb loves the Lord. Anyway. Another one. Another if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and if you're not committed, see, I want to talk to people out there. If you're not, after hearing this message, see, as a child of light, as a, yeah, he sampled Christ, so I'm going to take it back from him, praise God. As a child of light, you must be committed, man. Man, how committed are you? Put me in prison, I'm committed. Put me in a mansion, I'm committed. See, see, my commitment is not based on me being in a certain place. I change the atmosphere, praise God. I command the atmosphere based on my commitment. Angels come. You know what? I'm going to keep this going on Sunday because I got a revelation for this on Sunday. I got a whole new message we're going to share on Sunday about this, this commitment thing about being a child of life because I saw something just now. From the Holy Ghost. So anyway, um, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, um, and if you need to have a dedication, I'm talking about. I mean, I said, I mean, I mean a commitment. 
I don't mean that wishy-washy stuff. I mean, I'm committed for you are living, for you are dying. If that's you, even if your family members and friends, let's pray. Father, we commit to you. To the point of death. We know in our dying you live. We know, Father God, to gain the world is nothing if we lose our soul. But, Father, for you we live and for you we die. We know that Jesus is our sample, our example. He is the sample son. He died on the third day. He died, rather, and rose on the third day. We also know that not only is he your son, but he's also you, God, in the flesh. Jesus, we want to commit to you. We want you to help us to be more committed, more dedicated, unwavering in who you are and what you do. We stand on your word. We stand on, and we thank you for the revelation of David. Praise God. And we thank you, Father God, that us, our family members, and our friends walk in the level of conviction that would have us not be wavering in our faith. For you are not a man that you would lie. You stand on the truth. Praise God. We bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you, you committed people out there. Listen to me now. You got, you boy, you got, you got a word tonight. Now, you go out there and you, 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 you got that five points, okay? And you going to walk in that thing, okay? And I want to prophesy that, that, that the next 90 days, mm -hmm. You're going to see the five things that, that, that you get for being committed. You're going to get that. You're going to get the victory and the reward. You're going to have the confidence and the focus and the maturity. Lord, have mercy. Everything that you that I spoke tonight is a seed in your soul. And the Holy Ghost is going to give you a summer, a summer of Absolute victory. I'm talking about you going you gonna be you gonna you gonna receive so much this year because of your commitment. You give God commitment and you can withdraw 90 days of miracles. I I decree it. I I release the word. I'm telling you as I hear this thing. I'm releasing 90 days of miracles because of your commitment. Glory to God. Raise your hands for the blessing. And Saturday, I mean Saturday, Sunday, you better come ready. I, I'm ready for you. Shoot, I'm going to the theater right now. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to be sitting in the car, sitting, being in the car, waiting for you to come on Sunday. I'm, I'm so committed to you that I'm going to the theater when I leave. I'm going to the theater right now. Praise God. Raise your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his shalom. That's his peace. Now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding. God, your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all, the love of Christ. Thank you guys for being here today. My energy level is amazing. I had a good time. We laughed. We did everything. God was glorified today. But seriously, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. He always causes you to triumph. Because you are more than the conqueror in Christ Jesus. Have an amazing rest of your week. And we're going to see you on Monday. I'm off, see you Monday. I'm, I'm, I'm just off the chain right now. On Sunday. We're going to see you on Sunday for an off-the-hook service. Bring your family and friends. It's going to be blazing up in there on Sunday. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Jesus.